the Hilden are major antagonists in the Legacy of Cain series. A powerful and ancient race, long banished from Nosgoth, striving to return and take their revenge upon the world. They are introduced and frequently seen as enemies in the latter run of the original series, and are retroactively implicated in some of the earliest conspiracies. It's ultimately their machinations that bring about the collapse of the Pillars, and so they are the driving force behind the quests of the series' protagonists. Despite their undeniable influence, most of the Hilden's work is kept in the shadows for the first few games, with only abstract hints as to the true nature of the threat in the background. In Blood Omen, a mysterious assailant was responsible for the death of Balance Guardian Ariel, and the calculated repercussions of her lover, Mind Guardian Napraptor, finding her corpse, brought about the corruption of the Pillars. And only with the deaths of the now insane Guardians could the Pillars be restored. Unknowing Balance Guardian's successor and turned vampire Kane was sent on a quest to restore the Pillars by killing each of the Guardians in turn and restoring their Pillars. Through the quest, he discovered some tangled manipulations indulged by the Guardians, with at least one appearing to serve a higher power. Another Guardian, Dimension Guardian Azimuth, the Matriarch of Avernus, was heavily implicated in some nefarious schemes, opening portals to another dimension to summon demons to attack her city, and also apparently planning to summon them from other times too. In Avernus, there were also scraps relating to a secret possession cult worshipped there. The final boss was ultimately revealed as a dark entity that had possessed Death Guardian Mortanius and used him to murder Ariel, with the express purpose of bringing down the pillars from within. In Soul Reaver, one of the game's major antagonists, Terrell, was missing and wasn't encountered by Raziel, despite various signs that he had been present. Soul Reaver 2 elaborated further, giving us a backstory of an ancient war between a race of blue winged vampires coming into conflict with a crested race. And the end result of the conflict was the vampires sealing their adversaries into another realm, while the adversaries cursed the blue winged race with vampirism as we know it. Only with the final words of the game did a name arise, as Cain warned Raziel that by changing history, they had walked right into the Hilden's trap. But the word was left hanging, unexplained. God, the Hilden! We walked right into their trap. Raziel, Janos, must... Stay dead. It was Blood Omen 2 and Defiance that really set out to explain and explore these shadowy ancient enemies. Blood Omen 2, with its plot of Cain fighting back against a Nosgoth dominated by a new Saraphan order in the post Blood Omen era, revealed that the Hilden race were creatures long banished to a different dimension that pulled the strings of the new Saraphan in their attempt to re-inhabit and control Nosgoth. And that the leader of this Seraphan order, the Seraphan Lord, was the disguised, high-ranking general of the Hilden. The latter stages of the game took place in several secret Hilden locations, and Hilden scientists, engineers and warriors were encountered as enemies, having previously appeared in disguise as the Glyphrites. Ultimately, Cain sabotaged their attempts to use an ancient weapon and severed their connection to their realm, killing those in the material realm, including the Seraphan Lord. Defiance really explored the background and plot of the Hilden, tying together all the loose ends and showing that they were the enemy banished by the ancient vampires, 
that they were behind the possession cult as a means to influence events and people in the material realm. That they were behind the abduction of Tyrell and his use as a mouthpiece for the cult. That their possession of Mortanius had caused the corruption of the pillars and had been calculated to eventually lead to their collapse. And that the collapse of the pillars had opened the way for the Hilden to return to the material realm. Throughout the game, the Hilden were once again regular enemies, with three classes of Revenant featuring Hilden possessing corpses of different races, and two further classes, the Possessed and the Transformed, featuring the Hilden possessing and deforming living enemies. Several major characters were shown as possessed or otherwise influenced by the Hilden, and ultimately the prophecies of the Hilden champion were brought into fruition to allow the Hilden to escape their prison and set up the events of Blood Omen 2. See our video on the Champions of Prophecy for more on that one. With that rather brief roundup, let's dive into Hilden history as a whole to explain in more detail. The story of the Hilden starts thousands of years before the events seen in the games, back in the time before Nosgoth's recorded history, a time of myth and legend where few things are known for certain. But what we do know is that they were different in method and intention from the ancient vampires, which has led to suspicions that while the ancient vampires were fanatical religious zealots, the Hilden were rational, scientific and technological. Their similar power level to the ancient vampires inevitably brought them into conflict with the vampires, and their differences flamed into a war that ultimately lasted for a thousand years, as both races vied for control of Nosgoth. During this period, the Hilden supposedly developed or aided the development of the human race, from hairless apes cowering in caves to the beginnings of a civilized race in their own right. Although it appears they were primarily used by the Hilden and potentially by the vampires as well as something of a slave race. After a thousand years of conflict, both races were advancing in development of cataclysmic weapons intended to wipe out the other, with the Hilden creating a massive machine known as the device in the south of Nosgoth, which harnessed the thought of a powerful psychic entity known as the Mass to wipe out an entire population. However, the device required a network to project the thoughts of the Mass onto. But before the Hilden had a chance to complete it, the vampires struck first. The vampires erected the Pillars of Nosgoth, nine magical columns each representing a metaphysical sphere of influence, which served to banish and tether the Hilden to the Demon Realm in an event known as the Binding. But this wasn't all. The pillars were tied to the health of the land, and nine guardians were called to serve and maintain them, with a tenth guardian, the legendary Janos Audrin, called to protect the Reaver Blade, with the Reaver and the pillars, together, serving as lock and key. With the guardians gifted extraordinary longevity, and new guardians born upon the death and pillar token return of previous guardians, it was intended that the Hilden would be banished eternally. However, things didn't work out as the vampires had planned. As the binding began to take hold, the Hilden revealed they had a backup plan. As they fell to the demon realm, they placed a blood curse on the vampire race, which afflicted the vampires with bloodthirst and sterility. But worst of all to the vampires was the curse of immortality. As they worshipped the Elder God and its wheel of fate, a cycle of life, death and rebirth, their souls being imprisoned in the flesh was an affront to their God, and he quickly fell silent. To the deeply religious vampires, this was cause for despair. 
and many committed suicide to try to rejoin the wheel. The war was over, but the devastation of a thousand years of conflict, followed by the manner of its ending, bore both races a heavy cost. The Hilden would be stuck in the demon realm, subject to its hostile native species and its corrupting influence, while the vampires, who had planned to maintain the pillars to keep them out, were instantly subject to a large drop in population, with no way to recover it, and their sterility meant the guardians would only be born to the fledgling human race. A fragile new order was formed in the aftermath of the war, with the vampires ruling over and worshipped by the primitive humans, and in time they were able to find a way to pass the curse on, to effectively make humans a member of the vampire race, in an effort to maintain the integrity of the binding. However, the Hilden curse had done its job, and this policy along with the predatory bloodthirst of the vampires and their need to feed on humans, laid the seeds for the humans to eventually rise up and overthrow their masters. Seizing control of the pillars for themselves, and apparently wiping out most of the last vestiges of the ancient vampire civilization, along with their history. This effectively marked the end of the ancient vampire civilization, and the end of the period known as before Nosgoth's recorded history. From now on, the humans would be in control. The vampires of Nosgoth would be mostly turned humans, and the stories of the Ancients and the Hilden would fade into long-forgotten myth, remembered by few. In their dying days, however, both the Hilden and the vampires used their powers to look into the time stream and see hope in the future, where champions of each race would rise to restore them. And for the Hilden, this meant freedom from the demon realm would eventually come. It was just a matter of time. Only one Hilden was known to have escaped the binding. An ancient powerful Hilden known as the Seer, who was ultimately revealed to be a vampire Hilden hybrid but the means of her escape was left vague. In the material realm, thousands of years passed, and in that period little is definitively known about what was happening behind the veil in the demon realm. But developer comments suggest that the Hilden would have created structures to attempt to stave off the corruption of that realm. They would also have found means to domesticate or ally with the feral demons that inhabited the realm. And if they didn't have the ability already, they found a way to directly control the demons through some kind of possession. An ability which could ultimately have applications in the material realm. As the ages rolled by in the material realm, the Hilden plotted their return and a ploy which involved the creation of a possession-worshipping cult. But the exact order of how they got their foothold back into the material realm is not exactly clear. The Library of Willendorf claims a small possession cult had existed in Nosgoth for, quote, ages before the Blood Omen era, but the vague wording does little to define the exact length of time. What we do know was whether the cult existed before or not. It got a major boost after the fall of the Seraphang and the slaughter of the Circle at the end of Nosgoth's early history. As new Dimension Guardian Azimuth and Death Guardian Mortanius did some excavations beneath Avernus and uncovered something of great power. What that something was is never made clear only that Azimuth and Mortanius unearthed it, and it led to the seduction of the Circle. This event could represent the formation of the cult, or the cult first coming into contact with the Circle. But either way, the end result was that the Hilden now had a foothold 
not only in the material realm, but in the Circle of Nine itself. Part of the elaborate fiction behind the cult exploited the ignorance of the human guardians to the true situation behind the pillars and what they were holding back. Instead, they were presented with a carefully crafted fiction. A demon-like god known as Hashat Gik demanded a sacrifice of the firstborn to avert its wrath. And so the cult, both essentially protecting the human populace from the power of this dark god and in fear of its ability to possess them, did its will. While Mortania seemed to remain ignorant of the powers behind the Hashat Gik cult, it was unlikely that Azimuth did so for long, and she was described as having a sadistic glee even before the later corruption of the pillars. Perhaps as a result of her growing powers, or with Hilden assistance, she came to explore other realms, and will have worked out the truth of the cult when she crossed the line into outright conspiracy, stealing a time-streaming device from the Time Guardian and Elder God worshipper Mobius, she summoned a supposed monster, actually the devolved vampire Lieutenant Tyrell from the far future, to serve and play a role as Hashat Gik, and imprison it within the Avernus catacombs, giving the cultists an imposing figure to inspire fear and worship, and giving the Hilden a solid mouthpiece that they could possess to command the disciples at will. The impression on the cultists was no doubt powerful, and the influence of the cult grew, eventually luring in other members of the circle as well, and slowly undermining the very pillars themselves. But worse was yet to come. With the Hilden Possession Cult now granted access to some of the highest members of the circle, many of whom unaware of the true nature of what they worshipped, they triggered the next phase of their plan. A carefully timed murder taking advantage of the ties within the circle. Taking possession of Mortanius, a leading Hilden known as the Hilden Lord or the Dark Entity, used his body to murder the Balance Guardian Ariel. Her lover, Mind Guardian Napraptor, soon discovered her corpse, and tormented by suspicions, and potentially deliberately using the only means he had to retaliate against the Elder Guardian, he unleashed a psychic attack on the Circle, which left the other Guardians succumbing to madness, but also corrupted the Pillars, significantly opening the door for the Hilden and their demonic thrall and instantly corrupting from birth Ariel's successor, Cain. For 30 years, the Hilden bided their time, knowing a bigger opportunity would soon come. The Guardians, meanwhile, turned their attention to their own destructive schemes, some of which could potentially have inspirations in Hilden plans, such as the mutations in the Dome of Energy at Dark Eden and the corrupted environment seen through the eye sockets of Nebraptor's retreat, although none are confirmed. The main one that does seem to be related, though, is Azimuth's plan to call demons from the demon realm to attack the city of Avernus, which led to the city being set aflame and collapsing into chaos. Amongst all this, the ancient prophecies were beginning to be set in motion, Shortly after Cain's 30th birthday, Mortanius organised to have him killed and resurrected as a vampire, whilst using the legendary Heart of Darkness to achieve the deed. This act of redemption and defiance of the Hilden, Mortanius believed, would create a champion destined to defeat the Hilden. The young Cain was channelled by Mortanius and the Ghost of Ariel into a quest to restore the Pillars of Nosgoth by killing each of the Guardians in turn, and returning their Pillar Tokens to cleanse the Pillars. But he was kept ignorant of the fact that to cleanse the Pillars completely, he would need to kill himself. He eliminated the other Guardians, 
including dealing with Azimuth and her demon infestation, and in the course found an altar dedicated to Hashak Gik in the Avilus catacombs, decorated with a distinctive demonic form. Meanwhile, a time-travelling Wraith Raziel and a much older version of Cain, both from thousands of years into the far future, arrived and began independently to uncover long-forgotten secrets and prophecies. Shortly after this, the time-travelling Wraith Raziel arrived in Avenus, seeking the Heart of Darkness to revive Janos and provide the answers he sought. Raziel found his way to the Avenus catacombs and discovered a series of murals depicting the Hilden side of the ancient wars and their view of their champion before finding his way to the lowest level, where he could discover a gathering of cultists worshipping Hashak Gik, and found the entity they worshipped was actually his brother, Terrell, being possessed by several Hilden. Raziel confronted Mortanius, who despite his rebellion against the Hilden, was still conducting the ceremonies of the cult apparently unaware of the connection. Mortanius admitted his culpability and where he had hidden the Heart of Darkness, while the Hilden Lord goaded Raziel, anticipating the Hilden release and the stronger vessel they required, before Mortanius left to confront the younger Cain at the Pillars for the final time. Raziel, meanwhile, had his own confrontation with the Elder Cain. Convinced this was the supposed final battle between the champions, Raziel was victorious, and ripped the heart from Cain's chest in order to use it to revive Janos. Finally, at the end of his quest, the young Cain found Mortanius and Anacroth arguing at the pillars. Anacroth was angry that Mortanius had revived Cain as a vampire and demanded that Mortanius stand with us or die, with the us wording standing out as unusual because the circle was virtually wiped out by this period and it seemingly referred to the Hilden conspiracy instead. Mortanius refused and easily bested the younger guardian before Cain revealed himself. Mortanius told Cain that he would accept his destiny, but after his death, there would still be one more to take. As Cain killed the older guardian, his flesh twisted into the distinctive form seen on the floor of the altar in Avenus, as the dark entity revealed itself and mocked Cain for his compliance in their plans. And a conflict ensued, with the Hilden Lord apparently defeated. But this final kill left the secrets of the pillars bare. Cain was the corrupted balance guardian, and only with his death could the pillars be restored. The ghost of Ariel presented him with a final choice. Kill himself to restore the land, or refuse the sacrifice and damn the world. Cain chose the latter option, and the pillars collapsed, sealing the corruption and causing dimensional ruptures that opened the door for the Hilden. At the same time in the Vampire Citadel, Raziel had used the Heart of Darkness to revive Janos and completed the Spirit Forge, and upon his return, he witnessed the collapse of the pillars along with a suitably horrified Janos. When the dust cleared, the Hilden Lord was in possession of Janos. As he had done earlier, the Hilden Lord goaded Raziel, revealing that along with the fall of the circle and the collapse of the pillars, Raziel had handed them exactly the durable vessel they required for their next move. Having already murdered a major prophetic vampire figure to get to that stage, Raziel fought the Hilden Lord but was unable to stop him flying off with Yanos's body. And the next phase of the Hilden plans began.
The next step in the Hilden plan had the Hilden Lord taking possession of Janos and flying offshore to a chain of islands. This would either be the location of a long abandoned ancient Hilden city that the Hilden Lord would re inhabit, or the site where the Hilden Lord would choose to build his own Hilden city. There, he used Janos's magic and potentially the Nexus Stone to open a portal to the Demon Realm and bring his native body through the weakened dimensional boundaries from the Demon Realm into the Material Realm. However, while this meant the Hilden could physically step foot in the Material Realm once more, the ancient magic was still in effect, and the Hilden was still technically bound to the Demon Realm. So it was necessary for the Hilden Gate to remain open, to sustain their existence. Slowly, the Hilden Lord brought his fellow Hilden through the gate, but they lacked the power for a full invasion and required humans to drain of energy. So they decided on a slower and more subversive strategy. Hiding his inhuman face, the Hilden Lord traveled to the mainland to uncover the ancient weapon, the device, and found that a human settlement, Meridian, had been built over it. Although once again, it's possible he deliberately established the city himself around the surface remains of the ancient device. The Hilden Lord soon learnt of the threat posed to the humans by a new vampire army, commanded by a young Cain, which was bent on conquering Nosgoth, and of human stories of a holy order of vampire hunters who had hunted the vampires to near extinction centuries before. Inspired by these actions, he set up a new Seraphan Order, with himself as the head, to counter the vampire menace, and brought with him several technologies, such as glyph magic, to counter the vampires. But he also brought with him a distinctive item known as the Nexus Stone, which could open portals to other locations within Nosgoth, but crucially, could also negate the power of the Soul Reaver Blade wielded by Cain. In a climactic battle outside Meridian, the vampire army was routed, in part thanks to an ambush arranged between the Seraphan Lord and one of Cain's lieutenants, Sebastian. Cain was locked in simple combat with the Seraphan Lord, but unable to use the power of the Reaver, he was defeated and thrown from a cliff, leading to his apparent demise. Although vampires sympathetic to his cause did recover his body and finding the barest thread of life left, they nurtured it until the time was ripe for Cain to return. The Seraphan had put a halt to the vampire conquest of Nosgoth, and several of the surviving vampires sold themselves to their enemy, becoming traitor vampires, hunting down their former compatriots and ensuring that the remains of the army went into hiding as a secret resistance group known as the Cabal. With no one to stand against them, the Seraphan were easily able to sweep aside any resistance, and the Seraphan soon came to control the whole of Nosgoth, with the Seraphan Lord ruling from his keep in Meridian. His rule was seen as harsh, and contributed to humans joining up against them but he still lacked the power to completely bring the Hilden through. And so the facade continued. Secretly, however, the Hilden had other plans afoot. Slaves were taken to build or rebuild the Hilden city and carry out menial labor there and at the device. Meanwhile, Hilden scientists and engineers were put to work in restoring the device and Janos was imprisoned to feed the mass within. Starved of blood, he slowly devolved into a beastly form. Over time, Seraphan rule became absolute, and some of the supposed benefits of Seraphan rule were extended to the general populace, beginning in something of an industrial revolution within Nosgoth, and including a glyph magic network which brought heat and light, but was in reality a guise for completing the network necessary to finish the device and cleanse the land of vampires and humans alike. 
200 years after the Battle of Meridian, the Cabal were down to their last few members. And in what could be considered a last ditch attempt to turn the tables, they revived Cain. And Cain began to unravel the Saraphan Hilden plot in dramatic fashion. When the Seraphan captured leading Cabal vampire Uma, Cain was on hand to rescue her from the Seraphan keep, narrowly avoiding a confrontation with the Seraphan Lord. Learning from her intel about the Nexus Stone and its powers, he travelled to the Industrial Quarter and stole the Nexus Stone, destroying one of the major industrial bases of the city in the process. He gleaned further information from the secluded seer, a seemingly pure Hilden who appeared to have escaped the banishment to the Demon Realm, and learnt of the device. With Cain's visit prompting the Saraphan Lord to attempt to burn the seer's cottage to the ground. Eventually Cain made his way to the device, and after conspiring with the builder of the device in the timeless eternal prison, he learnt that Hilden blood could poison the mass at the heart of the device. So he infiltrated the structure and killed the mass, blocking the Hilden's primary plan and freeing Yanis Audrin, who returned to his vampire form. In response, the Seraphan Lord moved the Hilden plans to a more aggressive footing, seeking to bring the Hilden armies of the Demon Realm directly through the Hilden Gate. But Cain was able to travel to and infiltrate the Hilden city and lower the shield, preventing the vampires from beaming in. Janos and Vorador joined Cain, but the Hilton Lord took advantage of discord within the group to injure both Janos and Vorador, leaving Cain as the only one who was able to stop him. At the Hilden Gate, Cain confronted the Hilden Lord and sacrificed the protection afforded by the Nexus Stone to close the Hilden Gate. Meanwhile, Janos interfered allowing Cain to retrieve the Soul Reaver before the Hilden Lord dispatched Janos to the Demon Realm. In a fair battle against Cain armed with the Soul Reaver, the Hilden General was no match for Cain. And as the gate collapsed and the Hilden in the Material Realm perished, the Hilden Lord promised that his kind would return, ominously informing Cain that the Demon Realm ensured their immortality. For now, we have yet to see their next plans. Only the certainty that they will return. Throughout the series, a variety of hills and characters and classes are seen. We've talked a lot about the Hilden Lord the character who is arguably the main Hilden antagonist. But there are of course several other notable Hilden characters and enemy classes. So here's the Spotter's Guide to the Hilden in the Legacy of Cain series. Although being one of the most important Hilden characters, the Seer is left deliberately something of a mystery in the series. Developer commentary says that like her name suggests, she was intended to be a messenger of prophecy. But it's unclear if she was related to the ancient seer who was mentioned in Blood Omen to have prophesied the rise of the legions of the Nemesis. She was noted to be an ancient and extremely powerful Hilden who appeared to have escaped the binding. Although later sources offered more clarity, explaining that she was a vampire Hilden hybrid. She was said to owe Vorador a favour, but what this favour was, was never explained, and was kept deliberately vague. Although fans have frequently linked it to her escape from the Binding, and her continued presence in the Material Realm. This favour, and her escape of the Binding, may explain the antagonistic relationship between her and the Hilden General, and the evidence that she had already dispatched several demons outside her home. Early Blood Omen 2 concept art shows her quite differently, with more insectoid elements and wings, and a figure resembling her appears in concept art for the cancelled game The Dark Prophecy. And the Builder is another prominent Hilden, known for his role in the creation of the device 
and his subsequent imprisonment in the timeless eternal prison for violating the laws of gods and men. He's the first Hilden clearly seen in the series, and despite appearing to avoid the banishment to the demon realm, he seems to share a ragged character model similar to the banished Hilden, which is perhaps understandable given his imprisonment. The model is almost identical to the Hilden scientist's enemy class, however he does have a number of subtle distinctions in colours and patterns on his clothing. The Builder's use of the parole WE in his cutscenes suggests that he was not the only one involved in the building of the device and was merely the head of the project. Three Hilden enemy or NPC classes appear in Blood Omen 2. The first class seen is the Glyph Rites or Glyph Wraiths, which are revealed in later chapters to be a convenient disguise for the Hilden scientists and engineers to move among human populations. They can't be met in the regular course of the game, but using tricks to force them together with Kane makes them act the same as regular NPCs, even using a human voice. It's unclear if the Glyph Rites are in fact a sect within the Hilden that specialise in Glyph magic, or simply part of the larger engineer's duties. Interestingly, concept art depicts a Glyph Rite design torturing a prisoner in the style of the Eternal Prison Guardians along with the caption, Possessed and Vampire in the Prison of the Damned, potentially implicating that in the original designs, the Hilden were in control of the Eternal Prison. The Glyphrites were humans being possessed, and they originally fulfilled the roles later taken up by the Prison Guardians. The regular enemy class seen in later chapters are known alternatively as Hilden Scientists, Hilden Engineers, or Hilden workers. They share a similar character model to the Builder and can often be seen in areas of Hilden activity such as the Device and the Hilden City. Another class seen in the Hilden areas are the Hilden Warriors, who appear to be similar to the Scientists, although seeming to be more muscular and lacking clothing beyond a loincloth and with a pair of blade-like protrusions from their arms. The unusual nature of which has prompted speculation that they may have been artificially created or genetically engineered. Another unusual and unique pseudo enemy is seen in the shield room of the Hilton City, where an apparently part biological, part technological entity, known only as the Shield Guardian, hovers around firing green projectiles at intruders. It can't be damaged and can only be beaten by dropping the structures in the room onto it. The Guardian notably has blade-like appendages resembling those of the Hilden Warriors. Steve Ross's concepts for the Hilden in Blood Omen 2 appear to separate them into five classes or castes. While the Hilden scientists and warriors were seen in Blood Omen 2, the other three classes resembling a mage, a skeletal demon realm summoned Hilden and a pure Hilden were not explicitly seen although the pure Hilden design could have been an influence on the design of the seer and the pure Hilden murals seen in the Hilden city, and the skeletal design could be seen as a forebearer of the revenants seen in defiance, with the spirit coming from the demon realm to possess both living and dead. Defiance ended up showing five, or technically six revenant classes, that were created from the Hilden possessing material realm bodies for different effects. Two variants of human revenant could be seen, which showed Hilden souls possessing human corpses. The vampire revenants were Hilden souls possessing ancient vampire corpses. The Hilden revenants were more advanced and had the Hilden souls possessing ancient Hilden corpses, providing what is described as a perfect resonance between host and vessel. Living beings could also be possessed, with human enemy classes vulnerable to possession, where they became a class known as the Possessed. Later on, another Possessed class was seen, that were known as the Transformed. These were formed from living humans that were used up by the Possession, 
and broken at the point of death, a fate to which change humans were particularly susceptible. This led to a muscular, spiky deformation of human flesh that was almost demonic in shape. This class offered another explanation for the supposed demonic deformation of Mortanus's corpse at the end of Blood Omen 1, with the process clearly described in similar terms to the transformation at the end of Blood Omen, suggesting that the appearance of the dark entity was not actually demonic, but more as a result of the Death Guardian being deformed by Hilden possession when he died. There have also been various unnamed Hilden characters, such as those possessing Tyrell, and the disembodied voices encountered by Cain in the pit. These characters are not named as such, but numbered as possessed Tyrell 1, 2 and 3, and Hilden 1, 2 and 3, potentially implying that both occasions may represent the same individuals. Various Hilden speak incidental and ambient lines in Blood Omen 2, but they too are not given names and are only numbered. We're but hairless apes cowering in caves. We gave you all that you had, and now we take it back. In a similar vein, the demons that speak to Raziel at the end of Soul Reaver 2 are mentioned in developer comments to be the result of Hilden possession, specifically meant to goad him into rash action. Let me enlighten you, poor Raziel. Concept from cancelled game The Dark Prophecy includes numerous proposals for Hilden enemies and characters. One includes possessed armour sets, suitable for the Malak's Bastion level, which is the primary focus of the tech demo. These armours graduated from Seraphan-like to Hilden-esque designs, hinting at the true force at work. Numerous female Hilden are seen, including characters labelled as Hilden sisters, which notably seem to demonstrate wings. Others are labelled as Hilden warlords and a Hilden king, with a Hilden queen hinted in developer interviews, as well as the aforementioned character which resembles the seer. Of course, none of these concepts were realised, and so may be considered non-canon. And later developer commentary revealed the Dark Prophecy did not have much of a concrete story laid out, and at the time were just bouncing around ideas. A number of ancient Hilden can be seen in murals through Soul Reaver 2, Blood Omen 2 and Defiance, which show the pre-banishment appearance of the Hilden. There are even hints that the human religion, which bears many of the hallmarks of real-life Christianity, may have its roots in the mythological retellings of the war between the ancient vampires and the Hilden. The exact abilities of the Hilden are somewhat unknown, but they appear to possess a similar power level to the vampires. Their use of certain unblockable attacks without weapons may imply that like the vampires, they're stronger and more physically powerful than their human counterparts. Enemy abilities showcased by the Hilden involve several unblockable lunge attacks used by the Hilden scientists, warriors and the Seraphan Lord. A projectile of Hilden energy called Grave Spit is used by all the Revenant classes. A telekinetic immunity shield used by the Vampire Revenants. And a Berserker Rage of increased strength and speed is used by the Hilden Revenants. The grab and throw ability of the transformed also reflects an enhanced strength factor. In terms of bosses and possession, most of the abilities on show could be seen as adopted from the host, such as the dark entity rising and disappearing into the ground, and the numerous sonic abilities of Tyrell, or the numerous air abilities of Janos. However, Tyrell's possession of Berserker Rage and the possessed Janos 
using a summons named Call of Possession suggest that possessing Hilden could also add some of their own moves to the mix. Janos's comments that the Hilden were similar in power to the vampires, but different in method and intention, have led many to believe that the Hilden were more rational and technological than the more religious, dogmatic and enchantment favouring vampires. Advanced Hilden technology is particularly on show throughout Blood Omen 2, with technology seen that resembles cloning, genetic manipulation, electricity, suspended animation, force fields, hovering technology, laser beams and even potential holography. And this is alongside an industrial revolution among humans that appears to be somewhat inspired by them. Blood Omen 2 designer diaries tell us that the motivation to show these industrial and more advanced technologies was inspired by Soul Reaver and wanting to show elements of that ruined aesthetic when they were in full usage. The diaries also reveal that the Hilden's so-called glyph magic was the source of much of the technological innovation seen, although it's unclear if it was truly magical as such, as in other places it's described as being more of a form of energy. It's unclear if the glyph magic is related in some way to the glyphs of Soul Weaver, but the notably anti-vampire Hilden race being the source of the glyphs could be seen as the intended implication. However, the operation does seem to be quite different, and the glyphs are not explicitly linked in the designer discussion. Perhaps the most distinctive ability used by the Hilden is the power to possess and control other beings. Within the Legacy of Cain series, this was merely the latest in a long line of possession abilities, with Control Mind and Spirit Rack from Blood Omen, the Cut Possession ability from Soul Reaver, and Charm in Blood Omen 2, and even the Dominate Mind ability used by the Zephanim vampires in the cancelled multiplayer spin off Nosgoth. However, the Hilden seem to be the only one to use it as non player antagonists. Hilden possession is never really clearly seen in the earlier entries in the series, and it's only after Blood Omen 2 that the distinctive green glowing eyes associated with the Hilden from that game also come to indicate Hilden possession in a host. Prior to this, Soul Reaver 2 had demonstrated demons which were intended to be showcasing Hilden possession, but without any of the notable effects. It's also worth noting that the process of possessing a host is not clearly explained, although Raziel suggests his corpse possession is the same type of ability as utilised by the Hilden, except the Hilden obviously come to use it from the demon realm rather than the spectral realm. There remain questions as to the lifespan of the Hilden. The exact phrasing that they refuse to submit to the Wheel of Fate, and that the demon dimension ensures their immortality, have often been suggested by fans to imply that they are immortal. However, it can also be argued that this was referring to the defiance of the religious doctrine of the vampires, and that the extension in lifespan is due to the properties of the demon realm. Developers have suggested that the latter is the case, and the Hilden aren't truly immortal, but their extended lifespans are because they reside in a dimension where time is warped and frozen compared to that of the material realm. The comments also suggested that the demon realm may have rendered the Hilden sterile, like their vampire enemies. This also would potentially explain some of the technology in the Hilden city and the device, with some of the machines appearing to show the development of fetuses to feed the mass and apparent cloning facilities. The apparent ability of the Hilden to see into the time stream, and thus predict the prophetic champions for example, has also been questioned, but not definitively explained, with the answer given simply telling us that the exact mechanisms have not been revealed yet. Such a prophetic foretelling could also explain the mural seen in Hashat Gik's altar in Blood Omen 1. 
While the Hildens seen in the series are not shown to possess the power of flight, there are suggestions that this has been considered as an ability of theirs at various times. Firstly, concept art of the seer initially has her bearing insect-like wings. However, this concept was discarded. Later on, another concept for the Dark Prophecy featured a group of three Hilden sisters, along with the annotation, perhaps the third sister has wings, question mark. Although once again, as this was cancelled, the proposal never made it to fruition. In the series to date, the Hilden seem to be depicted as ground-based, contrasting with the aerial attacks of the ancient vampires. So the appendages appear to be crests, but this could be developed further in future. The origins for what became the Hilden actually lie in non-legacy of Kane works in the early 90s, and artist and designer Steve Ross. In 1997, he was working on a Quake Engine game called Sirens, which ended up being cancelled, and involved a number of Geiger-esque designs. Soon after, he was employed by a company called And Now to work on a sequel to the Mega Drive or Genesis classic Shaka and Forever Man, and chose a similar aesthetic and style. Ultimately, Shakan 2 was also cancelled, but Steve Ross's distinctive style had caught the eye in other companies, and he was soon employed by Crystal Dynamics to work on Blood Omen 2. While heavily overworked and taking on several demanding roles in the team, his style bled through, and his subconscious copying of previous works meant that much of the art of Blood Omen 2 resembles these prior games. It's worth noting that despite persistent rumours claiming Blood Omen 2 literally started life as Sirens and Shikan 2, no evidence has been found directly connecting these games, and the explanation from the developers, even years after they've left the industry, has always been that there was no behind the scenes deal between companies, and the similarities are simply due to Steve Ross's trademark style and unintentional mirroring of previous works while under pressure. With all the discussion about the Hilden and their origins, we should also highlight that they were not planned to be the overarching villains they became. While Blood Omen 2 was being developed, Soul Reaver lead Amy Hennig was concerned about some of the apparent contradictions being introduced without resolutions being formulated. So she set out to find a way to allow these changes by using the precedents set out in Blood Omen and Soul Reaver and actively wrote Soul Reaver 2 with these considerations in mind. Thus, while the Hilden were only truly introduced in Blood Omen 2, Soul Reaver 2 and its time traveling paradox inducing storyline was written in part to deliberately use the lore established in Blood Omen, i.e. the battle of the two Soul Reavers between William and Kane and the ensuing timeline change, to justify another timeline change that would allow Blood Omen 2's events to exist without contradicting the rest of the series. In this way, Blood Omen 2's Hilden plot was slowly explained and given extra detail through Soul Reaver 2 and Defiance, and explicitly related to the plot of the Hashat Git cult and the Dark Entity from Blood Omen 1. In terms of Blood Omen 1, the Hashat Geek elements of the plotline were actually a late addition to the story and were not present in earlier drafts. In fact, there's recorded dialogue of the ending where Mortanius admits personal culpability for the murder of Ariel and did so explicitly because he disapproved of Ariel and Napraptor's relationship and recognised the pillars and guardians were relics of a bygone age rather than any possession plotline. Even into earlier builds of the game, there's no altar of Hashat Gik area, and no references to the cult or the god in the game. Of course, there was a significant legal wrangle over control of the franchise between Blood Omen 1 and later games, and the late addition of the Possession plot 
indicates that original developer Silicon Knights may have had further plans to develop the plotline in sequels that never came into fruition. Silicon Knight's original plans to continue the franchise are generally shrouded in mystery, but creator Dennis Dyack has revealed that they considered that Hashak Gik would be one of a series of powerful Elder Gods, plural, that were planning to bring down the pillars. Interestingly enough, echoing the plural Elder Gods mentioned in the Soul Reaver comic, rather than the singular Elder God seen in later games. Fans have long speculated that elements of the original Blood Omen sequel designs may have influenced later Silicon Knights games, and Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem has often been speculated to be a Blood Omen sequel that never was, with several elements bearing similarity to elements that were seen in Blood Omen. In particular, the Tome of Eternal Darkness as a stand-in for the blood-stained Tome of Hashak Gik, and the Ancients standing in for the Elder Gods, that were originally planned for the Blood Omen sequels. Another loose plot thread that was tied in was that of Tyrell. He was one of Raziel's brothers that appeared in Soul Reaver 1, but his appearance was ultimately constrained to the introduction cutscene. He was planned to appear later on in the game with a level involving Raziel in the Tyrellian clan territory which consisted of industrial areas and the smokestack scene in the intro, before Raziel defeated Tyrell and gained the Amplified Force Projectile ability. However, these elements were cut along with many of the later stages in the game, after it became clear they could not be completed in time, even with almost a year's delay. And Tyrell's territory became a cut content treasure trove that was not seen by the general public until our exposure of the Soul Reaver Alphas in 2020. Of course, Tyrell had not originally been planned to literally be Hashem Gick, but the plan to include him in that role was made soon after he was cut from Soul Reaver 1, and word from developers around the time of Soul Reaver 2's development indicated they absolutely had plans for Tyrell going forward. But these plans would not be realised until Defiance picked up the loose thread and integrated it into the hills and backstory. In doing so, it took an out of time Tyrell, who had last been seen in the far future, and devolved him as his brothers had been, at least hinting that he'd seen the end of the Soul Reaver era even if he hadn't met Raziel. Him being trapped beneath Avernus in the past signalled another bit of lost lore to longtime fans. Azimuth's possession of a time streaming device in Blood Omen 1, which was explicitly explained to be because Azimuth was intending to summon creatures from other ages, as well as the demonic thralls she had summoned in Blood Omen. Later developer comments explained that this element had been left vague for future games to potentially cover, but explicitly confirmed that Tyrell had been summoned by Azimuth to serve as an impressive mouthpiece for the Hilden. Interestingly enough, Hashak Gik's supposed instructions to sacrifice their firstborn does seem to bear some similarity to Cain's execution of Raziel, an event that was witnessed by Tyrell. Cut dialogue from Blood Omen 2 shows that the human slaves in the device and Hilden city were intended to be much more talkative, and word of Cain's exploits was intended to have been passed along between the slaves, inspiring them to aid Cain in something of a minor rebellion against their masters. Cain! Lord Cain! Hear me, Lord Cain! Cain! Lord Cain! Hear me, Lord Cain! At least one piece of cut dialogue from Blood Omen 2 appears to indicate that the Hilden may actively have been able to transform humans into demons, but this thread seems to have been discarded and not followed later. I don't want to be a demon! They made him! I, I saw him as he changed! His screams! No! Don't let them make me one of those abominations! No! No! The Hilden backstory was planned to be further fleshed out in the cancelled Defiant sequel The Dark Prophecy, 
with a number of animated suits of armour seen in the Malek's Bastion level, gradually developing from more Seraphan inspired to Hildlin inspired designs, perhaps ruling the true culprits who may have taken over Malek's soul fusing machinery after his demise in Blood Omen. Other elements discussed or seen in concept art included a vast Hildlin city in the Demon Realm protected from the corrupting influence of that realm, but slowly collapsing and forcing the Hilden to compete for space and resources, and with the Hilden Lord revealed to not be the leader of the Hilden, but merely one of several guild leaders overseen by the ruling Hilden Queen, who was using her powers to keep the demon realm and its fauna at bay, eventually leading the Hilden to domesticate, possess, or make alliances with the native demons of the demon realm. Although as a cancelled game, these elements may not necessarily be considered canon. The Hilden Hashak Gik debacle does call into question another part of the story, namely the true name of Hashak Gik, because it's not all that clear as to what the name refers to, and there may be several interpretations. In the original Blood Omen, the figure seen at the end is generally referred to as the Dark Entity, and it's only in the secret altar that the name Hashat Geek is mentioned, which along with the altar bearing the image of the demon-like creature which appeared at the end of the game, gave the impression that the Dark Entity and Hashat Geek were one and the same, which was apparently the original intention of Silicon Knights. However, this connection was never made explicit, and in later games developers went down a slightly different route. Blood Omen 2 called its main antagonist alternatively the Seraphan Lord and the Hilden General, which makes sense considering they were supposedly creating a new villain at the time. Meanwhile, Defiance, while attempting to integrate these elements, called the main Hilden antagonist by the title Hilden Lord apparently combining both the Seraphan Lord and Hilden General titles and tying the actions of the antagonist back to those of the Dark Entity, with developer comments explicitly confirming that the Dark Entity, Hilden Lord, Seraphan Lord and the Hilden General were all the same entity. However, Hashak Gik became a bit of an outlier. While the name in Blood Omen appeared to be an alternative name for the Dark Entity, Defiance gave fans cause to doubt this. For starters, Terrell posing as the mouthpiece of the Hashak Gik cult, and explicitly referred to as Hashak Gik, was not actually possessed by the Hilden Lord, but by several other Hilden, who took on the role in order to command their disciples. But this left with another quandary, in that the name could be shown to be appropriated by others in the name of the cause. Developer comments further clarified the situation regarding who was in control at what time, and explained that Hashat Gik was the name that the human worshippers used for their god, and that the actual Hash entity was a leader among the Hilden with his own agenda. This explanation notably left it open as to whether Hashat Gik was the true name of the Hilden leader, particularly as the title had been left to others, or whether it was simply a fiction concocted by the Hilden to inspire worship. Just to complicate matters, no other names with such flavour are used to refer to Hilden characters, and they typically seem to be referred to by a role, such as the Hilden General, the Hilden Lord, Hilden Warriors, Hilden Scientists, the Builder, and the Seer rather than names, although it is possible that they have simply chose not to use them up to this point. Another term that appears to be Hilden related is the term unspoken. In Blood Omen, it's first used by Ariel to warn Cain about a mysterious threat when she tells him to beware the unspoken. The term is later used to refer to the Dark Entity and is the name used in scripts for the character implying that the Dark Entity is the one that Ariel was warning him about. 
However, when the term reappears in defiance, it's used in a broader sense. Raziel still refers to the Hilda Lord as the unspoken, but he openly wonders if Tyrell is the unspoken. Other characters also use the term, with Vorador applying the label to an ancient evil within Avernus. But it's Ariel that perhaps gives the clearest representation when she says that Raziel is the unspoken, likely referring to his role as Hilden Champion. And it appears that the interpretation being used is that the term unspoken is applied to the Hilden race generally and that the ancient vampires decreed that the name Hilden would not be spoken aloud, in a similar manner to the way Voldemort is labelled as he who must not be named in the Harry Potter franchise. And this is corroborated in scripts, which describe Yannis' surprise at Raziel openly using the forbidden name, the Hilden. Join us next time on the Arcane Tomes, as we continue on our quest to ensure the forbidden histories of Nosgoth are not unspoken.